What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're gonna be installing some upgraded intake manifolds on my Nissan 370Z. So on this car, the car comes with regular intakes that lead to the intake manifolds, and there's an upper and a lower one. We're gonna be taking out the stock ones and we're gonna be replacing them with ported upgraded versions of those parts. So with the hood open, we're gonna get started with this install by removing everything so we can get access to the manifolds. The intake manifolds in this car are found underneath this engine cover and they're found in between both cylinder heads. So because this car is a V engine, there's a cylinder head here and there's another one here. The intake manifolds lie in between them and then the air splits going to this side and this side to both heads. So we need to remove a bunch of things to get access to those parts. So starting off with the first part, we're gonna be removing the strut brace that's found on top. Following that is gonna be removing the intake manifold covers that are found up top of here. So there's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts found on the front cover and there's gonna be another two back here and an additional one back here in the center. They're all 10 mils, take them all out. With the car now in this state, you'll be able to see that we have access to the upper intake manifold and the lower one is attached underneath it. So we're gonna have to remove this first before we can remove the lower one. Now, in order to get access to this one and take it out, we need to remove a couple things found on both sides of the intake. So we first need to remove the little intake tubes here along with the little PVC setup right here so that we can get access to the throttle body and disconnect the four bolts found on each corner of it so that it will release itself from the intake manifold. So I'm doing that also because there's coolant that runs through each of the intake manifolds. Now, if you can keep those lines connected, you're not gonna have to bleed the system and you're not gonna make a mess. So the same thing goes for both sides. So if you take a look right there, those two lines have coolant running through it. So I'm gonna try and keep those intact by just disconnecting these two pieces, disconnect this, just take note of the vacuum lines that are attached to it, both on the front and the back, along with the sensors. So we've got map sensors on there and a couple other things, so just take note of it and just disconnect everything so we can remove the upper manifold. Now on the back side of the motor, you wanna make sure you remove all the connectors, the little clips that go into these hard parts on the manifold. There's gonna be another connector back here. Literally just clip and push down on the back side, slide it off. There's gonna be another vacuum line back here as well that needs to be removed. So with some needle nose pliers, you can pretty much take off all of these. You don't need any fancy tools. So literally just clip and they should slide off. <laughs> should is the keyword. There you go. And that is pretty much everything. There also are gonna be some vacuum lines, but the vacuum lines are actually routed to the manifold. So if you leave them there, they'll come out with the manifold. So one more thing that needs to be done, there's two little clamps here. One of them going for the coolant inlet and one of them going for the outlet hose. Um, this is all for the coolant that's going to the throttle bodies. So you're gonna to need to disconnect the one that's closest to the port on both sides. So there's gonna be a little clamp slide the clamp down, you'll be able to slide it off and there's gonna be coolant that's gonna be coming out of this little port there. So what I'm gonna be using just to block it off is this little clamp. You slide this, the little open part, over the hard line and then the part that has the little grommet, like the little rubber part, that goes and plugs the line so you're not gonna be losing anything. So with the little clamp covering the little port, 
the throttle body on the passenger side is going to be good. So once you repeat the exact same thing to the driver's side one, we can then remove the bolts that are securing the upper intake manifold to the engine. Next up, using a 12 millimeter deep socket and a little extension, we're gonna be removing the one, two, three, four, five, six bolts that are securing the upper manifold to the bottom. Once you loosen all six of those out, there's going to be another stud with a nut on the front and another one on the back side. So when you're pulling the upper manifold off, just keep in mind that the bolts are still in there, but you can literally lift this straight up and it should expose the lower manifold and the gasket that's in between the two of them. With the upper manifold removed, you'll be able to see not only the lower manifold down here, but because we're gonna be swapping out the stock one right here, with our aftermarket ported one, you should be able to see all the imperfections that are found in here. So because all this is just standard cast aluminum, you'll be able to see some marks in between all of the metals. So to remove this, we first need to disconnect both of the fuel rails and all the sensors and the bolts that are going to it found up here. It's not a difficult process, but again, just like earlier, there's a decent amount of stuff that we need to remove in order to get access to it. So we're gonna get started with removing the one two, three, four bolts that are holding the fuel rail up to the lower manifold. After disconnecting the one, two, three, four bolts that are securing both fuel rails up to the lower manifold, what we're gonna have to do is disconnect these two 10 millimeter bolts that are securing the fuel delivery line to the passenger side fuel rail. Once the fuel is brought to the passenger side fuel rail, there's another line underneath that connects here that delivers it to the driver side fuel rail. So there's gonna be two of them. If your car was driven recently, it may be under a little bit of load or pressure. So you may experience a little bit of fuel coming out after you disconnect these lines. Now be careful not to drop them into the engine because we pretty much have this all exposed. So if you guys can put a rag right here just to prevent that from happening. So these two 10 mils, once they're out, you'll be able to lift this off of the fuel rail. So a tiny bit of fuel did come out. Now, when you're removing this, you also have to push down on each of the, these little connectors here to slide the electrical part, so the harness, off of the fuel rail. So push down, and you should be able to slide it off. Another thing that I had to do was disconnect each of the pigtails that are going to the fuel injectors, along with disconnecting the sensor on the back side of the driver's side fuel rail. And then after that, I was able to bring and lift the entire thing up and out, so all of the fuel injectors and the fuel rails will come out in one piece. Last but not least, there's going to be eight 12 millimeter bolts that are securing the lower manifold up to both cylinder heads. So this is gonna be found in between the two. Crack each one of them loose and take it out. Now before you just go ahead and grab the intake manifold and lift it up, ensure that there's not any dirt that's found in between the cylinder head and the manifold because as soon as you lift this up, if there is any dirt, it will fall into each one of the ports. So just keep that in mind. But after you loosen those up, you should be able to just pull the entire setup and lift it upwards. There's also gonna be two gaskets that are gonna be found underneath here that will need to be replaced. So this manifold right here is the lower portion these runners are the stock regular castings that are found in these V6 cars. So you can see that there are imperfections in the castings and we completely removed that on these new ones. So this here is an identical piece to this that I sandblasted, painted black, and then ported and polished all the runners. So there's no imperfections now on these parts. It's all super smooth and the transition from the upper manifold that goes over top of this to here is really smooth and that is where we're gonna be getting some power. Now, also, I made each one of these ports a little bit larger than these stock ones. So we should see a little bit more air going through here and the speed and velocity of that air is gonna be faster because we don't have those imperfections on this side. So we're gonna grab two new gaskets that mount here and here and then we're gonna go ahead and torque down this lower manifold to the engine, first to five foot pounds, then to 19. This lower manifold needs to be properly torqued to both cylinder heads so that the gaskets get laid on there properly. So there's a proper torque sequence. So we're gonna begin with doing first the outside four bolts and then we're gonna work our way into the inside. The first bolt to torque up is gonna to be the one right over here. Followed by number two being on the back corner. Then number three. Then number four being right here. 
Following that is number five, then number six, then number seven, and last but not least, number eight. So that first initial torque sequence is going to be to five foot pounds. You're then gonna to wanna to turn up your torque wrench to 19 foot pounds and then repeat that exact same torque sequence. With the lower intake manifold now installed, what we can do next is grab the fuel injectors along with the entire fuel rail for both sides and reinstall this. So there's going to be the rail over here and we're gonna to have to reprime the fuel system after we get this started. Now, side note, if you guys are taking these injectors out and putting new ones in, you do wanna put a little bit of fuel on the O-rings themselves so that when you go ahead and push the injectors and the fuel rail down, the injectors will slide nicely into the lower intake manifold. If the intake manifold was a little bit dirty, be sure to clean that up before putting all of this in there. Be sure to install the wiring harness that's going to each one of the fuel injectors on the fuel rail and then connect it on the backside. So next up comes installing the upper intake manifolds. So this one here is the OEM one that we removed from the car. Now this is not ported, this is the standard OEM finish. This here is the same piece as this, however this has been ported. If you guys wanna find the video on me porting both the upper and lower, you guys can find a link in the description box. The part numbers between both of these pieces is the exact same. However, the inlet ports and the runner ports are different. So these have been reshaped and these are a lot smoother than these ones here. There's a couple different transitions between the actual makeup of these pieces. So because they're basically layered pieces of plastic and then fused together, they're not always gonna line up perfectly. So what I did to make this one work better is get rid of those imperfections, smoothen them all out, and that way there's not gonna be any kind of lip between each of the layers of plastic. So with that being said, we can install this on the car using the exact same hardware that we had, and the install should be really easy. So first off, we're gonna start off with torquing each one of these bolts down that secure the upper manifold to the lower manifold to 14 foot-pounds. Just like the lower manifold, there is a torque sequence to torque up the upper manifold. So starting out from right here, we're, this is number one, we're gonna be tightening each one of these bolts to 14 foot-pounds. Next up, we need to install all the connectors that we removed earlier. So everything like this one here, this one on the back side, that clip there. Along with those connectors, we need to install all the vacuum lines and the coolant hoses that we removed. So this way, we're gonna have everything working as it's supposed to. We're not gonna have any vacuum leaks, and the car is gonna drive a little bit better because we're gonna have these better intakes installed. So with the manifold now installed, we can grab the coolant line that leads to the throttle body. Connect it up, slide it over top, and then with some needle nose pliers, just move the little clamp further down the line until it's over top of the throttle body. Now next up, we're gonna be installing the throttle body onto the manifold, just like this. We're gonna be using the same hex bolts that we removed before from the old manifold to install this into here. Last but not least, we need to install the little intake tube that goes in between the intake box and the throttle body. Now, don't forget to hook up any of the other peripheral stuff regarding the emissions, and then we can put the strut brace over top along with the engine cover. That will complete the install for the upper and lower intake manifolds on your car. So guys, after installing the upper and lower ported manifolds, we have no check engine lights, no problems, but we're also not getting the most out of them. So without actually doing a software upgrade where you tune the car, after you do these hardware upgrades, you're not gonna be getting the best out of them. So with that being said, I am getting a tune for this thing, but it's not going to be until I install intakes on the car. So in this video, I changed out parts that were post throttle body, but in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to replace parts and upgrade parts pre throttle body. She hauls. Yeah. Maybe after I do a tune, after I put those intakes in, and after I get that all sorted, maybe we'll do a race between the Z and the Mini. Let's see which one's faster. But anyways guys, if you guys wanna find any of the products or the tools you guys saw in this video, you guys can find more information in the description box below. I link everything down there for you guys. If you guys wanna port, you guys can also find a link to that video so you guys have an idea as to how much and how long this entire process takes. 
So if you guys have any further questions, comment sections down there. You guys know what to do. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.